So when I was in high school, I grew up in a town that didn't have fast food at all. <clears throat> so we, what we would do is we would go to the next town over and we would go do this thing called the horseshoe. And I don't know why it was called the horseshoe, but it was. And what we would do is we would go to each place and we would get something from there and, and make the ultimate fast food meal. So we'd get like a Baja Blast from Taco Bell because that's the best drink that you can get from any fast food restaurant. We'd get fries from McDonald's, we'd get burgers from Wendy's, and we'd get, uh, we'd get like milkshakes from Sonic. And it was, it was awesome. It was, fun, it was fun, but it was kind of tiring after, um, after you did it multiple times. So that, that's how I used to do fast food. And then I moved to West Michigan and they had this thing called Chick-fil-A. And now it's a one-stop shop for me. Got, you've got the best milkshakes, you've got the best food, great fries, and I mean, like the best drink ever. Chick-fil-A for me is like a one-stop shop. If I need to go get something for fast food, that's where I go. But when we think about this idea, when, it, when we think about this idea of going to one place, going to one place for a source, our source for everything, when we think about that, when it comes to our faith, um, it's, it's an interesting idea. <clears throat> so the big question I have for you guys today is this, is there something that can actually satisfy me? And the good news is the gospel has, has our answer for this. So if you would turn with me to John chapter four, verse one through 15, we're going to spend the next few weeks in this chapter, um, in in John chapter four. Um, a fun, interesting fact about John four is it is uh, the longest recorded conversation we have between Jesus and anyone. So we get to learn a lot about Jesus in this chapter. So um, if you would um, pause the screen or you know pause this, this video and go get your Bibles. Seriously, I want you guys to have your Bibles out in front of you uh, as we go through this. <clears throat> Now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although he himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee and he had to pass through Samaria. So he, he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near, near the field that Jacob had given to his son, jo Joseph. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is, that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. Where do you get this living water? Uh, are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us this well and drank from it himself as did his sons and livestock. Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. So when we look at this, we, we see uh, in verse seven through nine, uh, this, this interesting um, back and forth between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Um, women and Samaritans uh, and, and the relationship between uh, Jewish people, especially rabbis was uh, really distant. People would go around uh, Samaria, uh, yeah, Samaria just so that way they wouldn't have to deal with uh, the people there. Samaritans were part of this northern kingdom. Um, there's, there's more history that goes into that, but really what you need to know is um, Samaritan, especially Samaritan women and Jewish people were so distant that before Jesus was born, um, 
Jewish rabbis wrote about Samaritans and they said this, that women in Samaria are from the birth or from from infancy, they would be perpetually unclean. Um, that even just to touch a Samaritan woman, um, they they were unclean all the time. Uh, this was this was a really big thing. This was a um, a thing that really segregated Jewish people from Samaritans, um, and it would have been extremely uncommon for Jesus to do this. When we look at verse ten. We see Jesus saying this, if, if you knew the gift of God and him, or, and who it was uh, that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him for it and he would have given you living, living water. We see that, um, that idea of the gift of God. Um, if you knew the gift of God, that's what he's saying to her. Um, this may w- well be eternal life, but this also is a Jewish concept of um, the Torah, really, if you knew scripture, then you would know who I am. See, Samaritans only believed in the Pentateuch or only believed in the first five books of the Bible. After that, they, they wouldn't accept any more, um, like any more b- the books of the Bible, like first and second Kings, um, judges, um, they, they rejected those, those books. And so, Jesus may be saying to this woman, if you would have known scripture, if you would have known the prophets, if you would have known the prophecies about the Messiah, you would have known who I am. If she would have been faithful along with the rest of Samaria, she would have known about the prophecies. Jesus uh, rebukes her in verse 22, um, says this, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. Really what he's saying to her is, Samaria and Samaritans are, are not following and, and have not followed what God, what Yahweh has asked them to follow. And if you would have known, if you would have been faithful, uh, you may have known what, what it is we're talking about. So we look at verse 10 some more, this idea of water and living water. See, water... Um, there have been many metaphors in Scripture for water, um, especially in the Gospel of John. John uses water as a metaphor for life. Um, he uses it as a metaphor for the Spirit later on. But really, in this chapter, water is the satisfying eternal life mediated by the Spirit that only Jesus, the Messiah and Savior of the world, can provide. Scripture uses this idea of water uh, to mean this very meaning before. If we look at Jeremiah 2, verse 13, it says this, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the uh, the fountain of living waters, and they have hewed out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Jeremiah and God, uh, through Jeremiah, is is rebuking Israel, is rebuking his people saying, I gave you eternal, I gave you life. I gave you what you needed and you chose something else. You chose something else that cannot hold water actually. You you decided to dig cisterns, you decided to make a well or someplace that would hold water. And in fact, uh, you tried to put water in there and in fact, it couldn't even hold water. What you put your water and what you put what you thought was going to satisfy you actually couldn't satisfy you at all. This is our human condition. When we try to ourselves find things that will bring us life, that will bring us satisfaction. This is our propensity as people to reject what God's given us and to go after our own things. Let's look at verse 13 and 14. Jesus says this interesting thing. Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. The water I give him will become in in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. This is where we get to our main point. Jesus is the source of all life. Life is one of the most sacred things in our society, and inherently, all of us understand this. This is why we have laws against murdering people, and when we see on the news that people were killed or people were tortured, we are appalled by that because life matters. Jesus here is not simply even just talking about um, 
life here on earth, but he's talking about eternal life, a, a life that is everlasting. And Jesus is talking about a life that does not end, a life that he can provide uh, for all people who believe in him. The truth is there are endless pieces, there are endless places to try to find life, to try to find the thing that will satisfy us. But you won't be able to find your satisfaction in anything else besides Jesus himself. See, that woman will always have to go back to the well because we will always become thirsty again. There isn't enough of fill in the blank for you to satisfy you. There isn't enough sex to satisfy you. There isn't enough alcohol to satisfy you. One day you will become sober again. You cannot be drunk enough where you can no longer become sober. You can't be high enough where you will become uh, sober again. There isn't enough of anything to satisfy you. And I get this. I understand this. It's, it's hard and it's easy really to chase after things other than Christ that we think are going to satisfy us, that are going to bring us the feeling that we want. See, in high school, I, I was never attractive enough or I was never pursued by any women. I, I had a hard time finding people to date me and um, I really felt rejected. And something that I longed for was for someone to want me, someone to be, to, to, to desire me. And um, I tried so many different ways. I, I tried so many different looks. I tried everything. I tried so hard. In fact, I tried so hard. Yes, those are all pictures of me. But nothing, none of those things satisfied me. Even when I found my wife, even when she desired me, it became something that wasn't enough. I, and I love my wife and it's, and she's amazing. But the thing is, she can't fulfill that need for me. She can't fulfill the desire that I have because it isn't a desire to feel desired by, by a woman. It is a desire to, to feel desired by God. So our application, we've just got one today. <clears throat> The application is go to Chick-fil-A. Not literally, but <clears throat> you don't need an endless list of places to try to find life, to try to find satisfaction. Go to the place that has it all. Jesus Christ can be the thing and is the only thing that can fully satisfy you because he created you. Romans 1, 24 through 25 says this, Therefore God gave them up to their, in their lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and worshiped and served the, crea uh, the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. What this passage says really is, that God is the creator, and worshiping anything less than Him, worshiping anything that He has created, won't be enough. Cannot fill that, that desire in our hearts that we all have. And I'll, I mean, I'll be honest, like so, what God has created is awesome. I mean, I have personally, I mean, TikTok is, is amazing. Like, you know, have I spent more than 40 hours watching TikTok this week? You know, those are just numbers, but like maybe, maybe that's happened. <laughs> No matter how much TikTok I watch, I will always want to watch more. I could watch every video on TikTok and I would still desire, there would still be something in my heart wanting more. It is created. What God created cannot fill the place that was designed for the creator. And so I wanna leave you with this question before you guys go to small groups. Where do you run to to find life? Where do you actually go when you want to find satisfaction? Let's pray. God, we thank you for, for life. We thank you for life eternal that you give. We thank you that you, you don't care about the social norms that are in this world um, that separate us, that you cross those in order to have a relationship with us. 
And we thank you that you came down from heaven to pursue us. God, help us to respond to you and help us to find our satisfaction, our joy in you because there's nothing that can give us joy like you. God, we love you and we love to do your will. So help us do that. In your name we pray, amen.